In the previous video, we tested a new flexible shaft and handpiece attached to my 3D printer. We milled out a simple three pen stand, but found the dimensions of the finished pieces to be inaccurate. In this video, we'll see if we can correct for these inaccuracies by recalibrating the 3D printer and setting the real end mill cutting diameter. Once you've built and calibrated your 3D printer, that calibration should be pretty good for the life of that printer, assuming that the mechanical properties don't degrade over time. And also assuming that you don't change anything else regarding the 3D printer, and that includes the step stick drivers that control the motors, and also the firmware that controls the 3D printer itself. Both of those things I tinker with every now and then, especially the firmware of the 3D printer. I've recently upgraded to Marlin 1.1.9, so it's possible that the calibration in my 3D printer needs to be redone. So let's start that now. The first thing we'll check are the number of steps currently assigned on this 3D printer to move the X and Y axes. And I find using the on-screen display is just as easy, or if not easier, than talking to the printer using uh, G-code commands. So here, we'll go into the menu, we'll scroll down to control, scroll down to motion, and finally we'll scroll down to steps per millimeter. And the first two options here, X steps per millimeter and Y steps per millimeter. Here we can see they're both set to 80. 80 exactly. So this is the default for my 3D printer. The number of steps are governed by the micro-stepping of your step stick, the degree of rotation on the stepper motors, and finally the diameter of the pulleys on the stepper motor. I'll start with measuring the x-axis motion. To begin, I'll get my starting position. That'll be from a fixed point. The fixed point will be the left x-y joiner to the x-carriage. So I have the x-axis homed at the moment. So let's just measure how far the carriage is from the left xy. So we're looking at 46.9 millimeters. Let's now move the x-carriage 10 centimeters to the right. And measure again from the same fixed point to the same point on the X-carriage. We're looking at 46.63. Pretty close to 100 millimeters, but not exact. And now to measure the Y-axis, I'll measure between the right-hand side XY motor and the bottom uh, X-gantry rail, and we're looking at 11.8 millimeters. I'll now advance the y-axis 100 millimeters and I'll measure again keeping a steady hand here we go uh, 111.65 millimeters so we can see on both the x-axis and the y-axis we requested 100 millimeter travel moves, but on the x-axis we came up short. We actually moved 99.73 millimeters, and on the y-axis we were also short. We came up to 99.85 millimeters. So we need to adjust the uh, steps per millimeter on both the x and the y from 80 by the difference to get our new steps result. So for the x-axis, we asked for 100 millimeters we actually got 99.73 millimeters. So using our calculator, we'll enter 100 divided by 99.73, gives us this value. We'll then multiply that by the number of steps that we currently have in the printer, that is 80, and the result is about 80.21 steps. So that's what we'll uh, update in the 3D printer for the x-axis. And the same thing for the y-axis. Let's quickly do that calculation. 100 divided by 99.85 gives us this value. Multiply by the current steps, which is 80, gives us approximately 80.12. We'll adjust the x-steps 
from 80 to 80.21 and the Y steps to 80.12 and don't forget to save we'll first check the X axis, I'll advance the X gantry 100mm to the right and we'll measure One hundred and forty six point nine one, which I believe is exactly one hundred millimeters from the starting, and I'll advance the y axis one hundred millimeters forward. And measure the difference. Get that parallel and lined up. 111.82 and I think that is as well 100 millimeters. So now that we've calibrated the X and Y axis on my 3D printer I'm almost ready to attempt uh, milling these particular pieces again as last week we encountered the lengths and widths to be far too short so this is supposed to be 80 millimeters uh, across and we came up at about 79.2 Seven seventy nine point six across and also for the width This is supposed to be 20 millimeters across and that was also short 19.7 as well So by adjusting the 3d printer hopefully the these dimensions will come up more accurate But the last thing we need to check and also argue arguably as important is the actual end mill that you're using So even though I purchased this at 1.5 millimeters Let's just double check to make sure that it is 1.5 millimeters in diameter. It is a two flute end mill, and being two flute, we'll just check the diameter there. And would you look at that? About 1.57 millimeters in diameter. So we know that the end mill actually has a diameter of 1.57 millimeters. But the last thing we need to check is how it cuts using this new metal handpiece. It's possible that this particular end mill might not be spinning perfectly centered on this particular chuck locking me mechanism. If that's the case, then we're going to experience run out. Run out will occur if this isn't perfectly centered and with every rotation, this particular end mill will kind of uh, wobble around and actually like draw a little circle rather than just drill a hole straight down. So if that occurs, we need to understand what that run out is and to do that, we'll just make a quick test cut. Then we'll use our uh, calipers to measure the width of that groove that we cut. And that'll give us the true cutting width of this particular end mill on our flexible shaft. Okay, let's measure this groove using my digital calipers. Get it lined up. And would you look at that? 1.8 millimeters. So we're actually cutting at a width of 1.8 millimeters with this 1.57 millimeter end mill. So that's run out of 0.23 of a millimeter. I'd just like to run one more test here. At the moment, the current end mill I'm using is quite reasonably priced end mill. It was only like 70 odd cents for a pack of five of these. But I do have a much more expensive end mill here that I'd like to test. This particular one has a four mil shank, which can finally fit inside this chuck. It is also a 1.5 millimeter two flute uh, cutting width but it's only four millimeters in cutting length. So unfortunately I can't use this to cut this plywood, but I can still use this to run my test. So let's see if the run out is also true with this much more expensive end mill. And just measuring the diameter of this uh, end mill, 1.47 millimeters.
Okay, let's measure this new incision. 1.7 millimeters. So that is bang on in line with the difference between the two end mills. They're approximately a 0.1 mil uh, difference. So the run out seems to be within the handpiece itself. In Fusion 360, I've modified the design so the interlocking sections are 5.6 millimeters in width. That should allow the pieces to hold together quite firmly. And I've also increased the diameter at the base of the interlocking sections to 1.8 millimeters, which matches the true cutting width of our end mill. And we'll also increase the diameter of the cutting width from 1.5 millimeters to 1.8 millimeters. And whilst we'll be recutting this design out of plywood, I thought it would be best to add some feet to the base of this three pen stand as it wasn't particularly stable at the end of the last video. And after 28 minutes of milling these out and just some light sanding to clean up all the rough edges, the moment of truth. Are they any closer to the dimensions that are in Fusion than what we found last week? Well, let's first test this piece here. This is one of the side posts. This should be 95 millimeters in length. Pretty close. 0.06 off, I'll accept that, and 20 millimeters in width. Oh, almost bang on, happy with that. Let's check the other side post. So I'll check the width. Again, about 20 millimeters, which is what we want. And the length, again, this should be approximately 95. 94, 95, that's pretty good. I'll be happy with that. Now let's check in one of the pen holders. 20 centimeters wide, uh, 20, 20 millimeters wide, sorry. And also the length. So here we should be looking at 80 millimeters. 79.80 on the nose. Not too bad. Let's check the length of this last piece. Should be 80 as well. Oh, it's come up a bit, come up a bit short, that one. Maybe I got carried away sanding the edges. Let's also try the side. So this should be about 20. Yeah, happy with that. And lastly, the interlocking uh, sections. We requested 5.6 millimeters. Let's see how close we got to that. Well, it looks like it's larger than 5.6, that's about 5.7, that one. Well, that one there is a bit closer, 5.67. Let's check this other one. Yeah, they're all pretty close, between 5.65 and 5.7. That's pretty good. Let's check this one. Yeah, that's a nice tight fit as well at about 5. 5.66, 0.67, this last piece, 5.7, 5.66. So after recalibrating the 3D printer and allowing for the extra width that the end mill is actually cutting within this plywood, we were able to demonstrate that we can get pretty darn close to the correct measurements when milling with just our 3D printer. Last thing to do is to actually assemble this. So I'm assuming this is going to be nice and tight. 
It's a nice tight fit, nothing loose there. It's also a very nice fit. And this last piece on top. Oh yes, just having that last interlocking piece, everything is now compressing onto each other. It's a really tight, strong connection there. There's no uh, wobbling in this frame. Much sturdier than last week.